Yaman Shalom, Rokete Yahaw Bashem Yoshai Bashem Rokakadash, Rabbi Yeramia coming again with another quick impromptu video as I do. Um, like I said, all praise first and foremost to the Most High Yahaw Bashem Yoshai. Okay, double honor to the Apostle and the Elders that taught us this truth. Alright, through the spirit of um, the Most High Yahaw Bashem Yoshai. But yeah, man, I was just reading through the scriptures once again, and I made a video on this maybe a few weeks ago, but the Spirit's on me to do it again. Okay, so I'm going to uh, make another video on the same topic, man. Okay, and it's very relevant, man. And we've seen this live in the flesh, okay? And it's pretty much the idea of the male factor, man, that was on the cross with Yahweh Shai, man, because when Yahweh Shai was crucified, there were two other male factors or men that were crucified on the same day along with him, man. One on the left and one on the right, okay? Now, the Lord said it out that way, that in the spirit, man, okay, those two men represented the two paths you could take being an Israelite, okay? Because those two men that were crucified with Yahweh Shai were Israelites also. Scripture doesn't say what tribe they're from, but they were Israelites, okay? Now, those two men represent what, um, like I just said, they represent what path, or the two paths you can take as an Israelite in this thing, man, okay? Because, um, hey, let's let the Scripture speak. Let's, let's read it, okay? This is the book of Luke, chapter 23, from verse 39, and it says, And one of the male factors which were hanged, railed on him, saying if thou be the christ now they weren't speaking greek man greek was around but they spoke hebrew so he, he really he said if thou be hamashiach which means if thou be the anointed one yeah save thyself and us but the other answering rebuked him saying dost thou not fear uh, the most high seeing thou art in the same condemnation Okay, so pretty much that guy wasn't really saying it, oh Lord save us because we don't want to die, sincerely, he was saying it out of, um, what's the word, sarcasm man, look man, you, you've been preaching all this time saying you're the son of the Mosai, been saying you're the Hamashiach, you're the Messiah, you're the, you're the Messiah, okay, why don't you just come down and save yourself and save us man, okay, that guy was being ignorant, arrogant and damn right out of line man, okay, now Yahushua didn't answer him, man. And the, and the other guy, he didn't answer him because he knew in the spirit the other guy was going to deal with him, man. And the other man, but the other, from verse 40 now, we're in the book of Luke chapter 23, um, verse 40. But the other, meaning the other male factor, on the other side of Yahushua, the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost thou not fear the Mosai? Hey, because them, those guys, were they, they were being crucified for a robbery. I believe they were thieves, man. Okay? So they were p uh, paying the punishment for theft. Okay? And he's saying, man, don't you fear the most side? Because look, man, you're about to die. You're on a cross in pain, agony. And it's only a matter of hours, minutes, or whatever it be, that you're going to be killed, man. Well, they were already put up to be killed, but they go and actually pass into the spirit world upon that cross, man. And he's saying, don't you fear the most side? Seeing that thou art in the same condemnation, because you you pay in the rightful due, man. And he says it here in verse 41. And we are indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. Okay? Because they were uh, thieves, man. So they're dying for, for, for stealing, man. Okay? But this man, he's talking about Yahweh in the middle now. Saying, this man have done nothing amiss. Meaning he ain't done anything wrong. Okay? And then he said... Unto him in verse 42, and he said unto Yahushai, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Okay, and Yahushai said unto him, Verily I say unto thee today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Okay, now I said earlier twice, and I'm gonna get to the point now that these two male factors with Yahushai on the cross represent the two paths you can take. As an Israelite, first of all, you got to be an Israelite to take one of these paths, okay? So if you're Israelite, you qualify. Then you have two paths, essentially, you can take. You can take the path of the ignorant man who heard about the truth, man, 
and, and buck up against Yahweh Shai, man. All right? Even though he's making the sacrifice for your sins, that you could potentially come back to the Lord and be a part of the elect. You can either buck up against this truth, which represents Yahweh Shai, because what did Paul say? We preach Yahweh Shai, him crucified, man, and him crucified, okay? Because essentially, through his crucifixion, the elect have their salvation redeemed. And we done, we've done the sit-downs on the word redeemed, all right? Which means monetarily bought back, okay? So the currency of us being bought back is the innocent blood. And that goes back to the law, man. For the remission or forgiveness of sin, um, innocent blood has to be spilt. And innocent blood of your house shy was spilt, man. In the sense that he paid for our sins. And he also paid for his own sins, man. Okay? In, in his past lives. Alright? But essentially, if you reject that gift of mercy and grace, then you're going to have to pay, man, at, at the hand of the destruction of who? Yahweh Shai himself, man. So he can either save you, or if you don't accept it, or you ain't, well, not even accept it, if you ain't qualified or chosen to be saved, okay, because the elects have been chosen from the uh, foundation of the world, according to, uh, I believe Paul wrote that, man, okay. So if he ain't chosen, then he go and destroy you, man. Okay? But the two paths you can you can take when you hear this truth is to buck up against it or to be like the other male factor that acknowledge, man, shit, I've been doing wrong, okay? And in the, in this flesh, I'm about to die for, for what I've done, man. Okay? We may die on this side, even being in the truth, man. All right? But in one of your house, I said to him, and in your house, I answered unto him, verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise, man. Why did he say today? Because when you die, your your rukha, your um rukha, which is your spirit, goes back up to the heavenly father, man. I believe um I may be wrong. Somebody can correct me, but I believe it's in the book of Ecclesiastes. I'm gonna check it up, okay? But it, it basically tells you that the spirit of men go back up to the Heavenly Father and the spirit of the animals go down into the ground, man. Now, they were humans. Well, they were living men. I'll say that. Because if you go into the word humans, that's even a whole other topic. But we ain't going there today. All right? But they were living men, Israelite men. Yahweh Shai, the righteous male factor, and the condemned male factor. They were all men, okay? And they all died that day, Okay? Yahweh Shai died, um, the righteous male factor died, and the wicked male factor died that day, okay? There's no, there's, and there's that, that bullshit that comes across when they say, oh, yeah, Yahweh Shai was in a coma. No, he died, he was dead, man, okay? But you people don't understand death, because death is only asleep, man, alright? But all the three spirits went back up to the Heavenly Father, man, okay? So that's paradise. Because when you're in the spirit realm, you're in heaven, you're in ha Hashemayim, you're in paradise. You know, you know you're you woken up to the complete truth. If you didn't know you were Israelite, you now know. Okay, and you're resting, man. Your spirit is at ease, is at rest until it's sent back for the judgment, man. Okay. And the most I say, well, look, when I put you back on the earth, you're going to pay this judgment or you're going to have this reward, man. Okay. So when your house side died, and when that male factor died, I believe your house shall part um passed on first, man. Okay, because they had really um, beaten him, whipped him, scourged him, and they put him through it, man. All for his own sins, first of all. Okay, starting off being as Adam and all the reincarnations he came as, and then for the sins of the elect, in all the lifetimes they lived and are living. Okay, whoever they let me be, Lord willing, Yahweh we are part of the elect. Okay. But they went to paradise, man. And that male factor, guess what? He's back here, man. Probably as one of the prophets. One of the brothers, man. Okay. Doing the work this time. Hey, but the point I'm getting that, man, is that he spent his life Probably being a regular Israelite, knowing he's an Israelite, but probably not. Well, he wasn't pushing the works, man, because he was uh, thieving, okay? But he, he probably knew the basics. He probably kept the Sabbath sometimes, kept the laws a little bit here and there, all right? But then went off, as we all do, okay? 
uh, like I said, know the basics of knowing he's an Israelite and he was a, th a thief. So he weren't really concerned in the truth, man. All right. But at the last minute, whoever knows the, the closing moments of his life in that lifetime, he asked the forgiveness to be amongst Yahweh Shai, man. Remember him in the kingdom. OK, and that's the point I'm getting at, man. If you ain't focused on remembering or your house shy remembering you in his kingdom, man, then he ain't going, you ain't going to be one of his elects, man. Because the men of the Lord, the reason why we do this thing is to be remembered of your house shy. OK, we do this thing to be remembered of your house shy. Well, first and foremost, the most high, your house. OK. Because when he remembers his elect, then he going to welcome you in, man. And you gonna be the and how's he gonna welcome you in when he delivers um the elect in the chariots, man? Okay. And the second point is, it doesn't matter at what point you come in; it matters what you do once you're in. I'll say that again. It doesn't matter at what point you come into this truth. All right. It don't matter, man. It ma What matters is what you do once you're in the truth. Okay, because you got guys in the truth ain't doing too much, and then you got guys that just come in and are eager, man. And the spirit and the, the scripture tells you that, man. You come in, you think it's great, it's lovely, it's sweet, like honey. Then when you digest it, it becomes bitter, but you still persevere on, man. Okay, but it don't matter when you come in because there's the parable. I ain't got the scripture up, but I'll roughly paraphrase it. Okay, but there's the parable of um. The workers that Yahweh Shai sent out, man, one in the ninth hour, one in the third hour, one in the sixth hour, man, okay? And at the end of the day, they all got the same penny, the same reward, man. And the one that was there from early said, how come I'm getting the same wages or reward as the guy that just came a few hours ago? And Yahweh Shai said, man, look, he's breaking it down. It don't matter when you come, it matters what you do once you're in, man, okay? So this male factor, he didn't push the works. He never walked with Yahweh Shai. He was thieving, all right? He never... He never um, went on the highways and the byways, teaching, listening, learning, and then started to preach. No, but he acknowledged his wrong and asked for Yahweh Shai to remember him. And that was enough for him to get in, man. You could say he was in the truth. For, let's say he asked Yahweh, I don't know, don't run with this. And say Yeramia said that it was five minutes or two minutes before the guy died. Okay, let's just say for understanding's sake. The guy said these words to Yahweh Shai on the cross um, five minutes before he died. That guy would have been in the truth for five minutes, then he died. But he's remembered of Yahweh Shai, therefore he's assured a place in the elect. Because Yahweh Shai said, today you're going to be with me in paradise, man. So wherever that brother is right now, probably in one of the camps, that guy's assured his election. But the most I cuts off our, our, our minds... That we don't remember who we were in, in a previous lifetime. So we are pushing the work as if we don't have that election. But we're working for it. So don't say I've gone and said, oh, it was five minutes before. It could have been a, a 30 minutes on the cross before. One minute on the cross before. A few seconds on the minute of, on the cross before. But however long that guy said that to Yahweh Shai, from that moment to the moment he died, man, that's the period he was in the truth, quote unquote. And that was enough, man. But then you got guys like Judas, man, that was with Yahweh Shai from day one. And what did Yahweh Shai say? There's 12 of you and one among you is a devil, man. Okay? So at the end of the day, that's the second lesson, man. It don't matter how long you're in the truth. It matters what you do once you're in. And that guy, that male factor, made a significant uh, move once he was in by asking Yahweh Shai that, man. Okay? So the point is that you can be like the male factor that acknowledged his wrong, asked for forgiveness of Yahweh Shai and for Yahweh Shai to remember him. And how do you ask Yahweh Shai to remember you? By doing the works, man. By praying and keeping faith and keeping the laws that just come up with this with your ability. But essentially by putting in the work, being active, doing something, man. Within your means, okay? Alright? Or you can be like the reprobate, reprobate guy, so like your, that uh, came against Yahweh Shai. And if you're coming against Yahweh Shai now, you're coming against the, the men of the Lord, the prophets, because we're the ones that are doing the work of Yahweh Shai. 
So the choice is yours. But essentially, the choice is the most size because he programs you to do what you want to do. Or makes whatever you want to do really is being programmed in a night. Because what did the scripture say? Uh, I think I think it's from Ecclesiastes as well. I may be wrong. I'm going to have to go and look it out myself. It's lucky on that. But the scripture does say that in the night time, the Lord puts the instructions in the man of what he shall carry out the next day. Roughly paraphrasing. So whatever you think you want to do, whatever choices you think you're making, yeah, you're making them, but it's been programmed in you to do it by the Mosai. So you better pray to the Lord that he's made you a part of his right hand men, the elect. The sincere brethren, okay? If not, then he's programmed you to be a reprobate, man. <laughs> Concerning the men of Israel, all right? But I hope that lesson has been edifying um, to the Akim out there. So keep pushing the word, man. Brakate, how about Shemir, Shai, Bar Shemir, Karka, Dash, and double honor to the boss and the heroes of Great Millstone who taught us this truth. So with that, um, Shalom to the elect, the hopeful elect of Israel. Shalom.